This conference will now be recorded. Okay, we're back in session. 428. 428. Yes. Recess is over. So, uh, anyway, again, I go back to, I, I've, I've got one other question. Uh, Josh, the lease on page 21, item 30. This lease may be terminated by either party by giving 30 days written notice. Well, then why in the heck are we doing a lease if I can get out in 30 days? Makes no sense to me. You're in for the term or you're not. Every commercial lease I have ever signed, if I'm going to get out early, I'm going to pay to the end. So I, I question why do we allow people to sign a lease and then give them a 30 day out or 180 day out with some of these others have. So generally the city prefers to have a unilateral uh, right to terminate for convenience. It's sort of a municipal. Well, do, do we not have considerations in there where we can terminate the lease based upon their non-performance and these other items? This is just a blanket. If I want out, I'm out. Yeah, you, if you want to terminate for default, yeah, there's termination for cause. Right. But this termination clause is typically, uh, sort of, ideally, it's a unilateral for the, to the benefit of the city, termination for the convenience of the city and sort of a, a governmental convenience. Um, sometimes uh, people negotiate and they're like, you know, I don't like that. I don't like the idea of having a lease where the city can just give me 30 days notice and kick me out. And they will sometimes say, well, then I want that. I don't want it to be unilateral. I would prefer it to be, you know, bilateral. Right. And so because of that, you know, it's sometimes the leases are negotiated differently as to the termination clause uh, and how it actually is written. And it's, so it varies from lease to lease depending on what's negotiated between the lessor and the lessee. Well, my question is if there should be some form of form of financial remuneration back to the city. If you want out early and your obligation, I'm just going to pick a number, it still remains $10,000 loss of revenue. And so you should be bound to, to, to compensate us for getting out early. That is an option, um, but it's, uh, I think under contract and lease law, it's very difficult to, because you, then you try to release it and you, have a, you need to mitigate your damages. You can't usually just claim, well, I'm out for money for the lease. You have to have a duty to try to fix that problem to mitigate the, the you know, termination of the lease. And that, of course, causes the city to have to move quickly. And so it's just generally not worth it, especially for a one-year lease. To do that, and uh, we got some five-year leases. Well, five years. I got leases. 180 days out clause, and that's 30. And so, another option is a liquidated damages, where you you know something. I think what you do you want out during this time frame? You get liquidated damage, you will pay us. And it may be prorated. There are lots of ways to to handle that. I would like to see those changes. I, I would like to uh, hear what uh, S has to say about this as well. I just know that I have signed leases and I want out, I'm gonna pay on a commercial lease. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, from legal's perspective, we can put in exactly what you need. It's, we had not been involved, or at least I was not involved in the direct negotiation of this. Right, I know you were after the fact, but I'm calling on some of your expertise maybe as to what you have seen uh, or or if you haven't, I'm not putting you on the hook for that, but uh, I just don't think people should be able to walk away when you have an agreement without being some kind of monetary settlement being done. But I, I agree with you, Counselor. I, I think it's not unreasonable that our position should be that and if they walk away, they need to pay some percent of the lease in the event that we are not able to fill it in the same amount of time. Yeah. If we're not providing the service or living up to the terms of the agreement, I think these leases already have, uh, if I recall, there, there are outs for people. And so live by the outs. And if you don't want to be in the business of it, if the city says, well, I want, I want to be able to get out of that lease, then don't get in the dang leasing business. 
you're not going to, why do you want a five-year lease? So I look at it totally different than what this lease says and a lot of what the rest of the leases say. So I'm just one voice here, but I have a real concern about these, especially going forward. So Councillor Corn. Um, I think the airport group can look at this. I trust those guys. We've got some business folks and some other interested parties on that. And I think they need to dig into it deeper. The other comment I have is when I hear we're going to do a nation study, study on, I don't know how you're going to do that because you're not mixing, you're not comparing apples to orange, you're comparing apples to oranges. Because some of these buildings out there have been there since their base was back, to the went back when it was Army Air Corps. Right. 1941. And, and well, and I know two or three of them that probably fit that category. Um, and you need to regionalize this thing because I happen to know for a fact that I can go to Phoenix Sky Harbor and get a hanger, a tea hanger, for just a little bit more than what we do. And guess what? The doors work. Well, it probably have some more event uh, and probably a newer structure and oh, all yeah. kinds of things. And so that are I'm, different. I'm cautious about how big a blanket we're gonna throw on this thing. Because you. if I go to New York or Dallas, then we got a you know, DFW airport, for instance, has been built entirely since this base was built. Yeah. Or the old base, the Roswell Air Center. And I'm just really cautious. And I know they're building airports and updating airports around the country. And if you got a if you got a cushy place, then you have to pay a little more. Yeah. So I'm I'm just cautious, but I'm gonna yield to the airport advisory committee and let those guys sort through this stuff. And it's not gonna happen overnight. I understand oh, that. Yeah. Um, but I, I want those gentlemen, we don't have any ladies on that right now, doesn't preclude anybody from getting on there. Um, but um, it, it, lots of things need to be discussed before they really dive into this thing. So. I'll make my wishes known. I just got one more editorial coming. You talk about the airport advisory that I really believe that we needed to, to on all the parks and rec commission, all of these other commissions that we have, that we need to rely upon them because they're digging in deeper than council or any of these committees dig into, that we should look for them to be recommending to us some things. And just as an editorial, Mr. Mayor, I believe that we should have these commissions should come and report at least maybe every three months, every six months, however you want to do it, that we need to be hearing what their what their feelings are and what they've got going on. So I would ask that you consider making some changes so that the rest of us council members, I don't know what's going on in Parks and Recs unless I go to their commission meeting. I don't know what's going on in the cemetery unless I go to their commission. I don't know what's going on at the airport as I go to the meeting. And I still have a day job. And to go to all of these meetings, I'm not opposed to being informed, but I think that really we need to start having these commissions come forward and talk to the council and give us an update of what's going on and what they feel is the right thing so that we're aware. Because right now we're shooting like this here, and I'm not chastising anybody, we're shooting in the dark. Yeah. So you, you, I assume I don't know whether that's the city manager or the mayor's responsibility, but I would ask that we make some changes in how we, we, we get our information as counselors. Uh, Do you have any comment there? I think the mayor is trying to. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Why wait? You want? No. <laughs> I think he's waiting, waiting for your comment. Well, no, I, you know, I, I'm, I've been very upset with what happened. You know, like Mystic or Avex, and that's still to come up. But we were told that the city gave them went up four four hundred percent on their lease. In the in the five months that we've been here, we were never given one update 
about are we at 350 percent 300 percent 200 percent we never heard a thing and then somebody sent out a text that they're moving out and they're all gone and everything and, and it was never discussed by this council by anybody and, and uh in, you know out we can live with instead of six thousand we can live with eight thousand a lot or twelve thousand we were never we never discussed one thing in this council with anybody i, I don't know of anybody that this customer and that's the one way to run a show okay now we've had a lot of consideration about well who runs the day-to-day -day operation of the city and some people say it well it's not the council well all i'm going to tell you is a failure on the, on the other side if we were if we never even had a discussion about what was the fair market value for this council to decide what we want to lease it at i mean we have to pick up the pieces we're the council's the one that has to determine who's going to make this 65 or six and a half million dollars for the Senate. Somebody's going to come up with that money. I don't know where it's coming from. And uh, so, I mean, that's this whole structure has to be redone and, and what's going on. Because uh, I don't think the council is given a fair shake about uh, the some decisions that are being made. We had no say at all on whether or not. Maybe extra mystic left in my opinion. None. And that was all decided by the last council. Yeah. Well, that's the way I see it now. You know, but I, I don't like that. I anticipate that changing uh, by whoever whoever ends up making any more. That's not going to happen uh, for very long. I mean, that's a, we've had about enough of that. We've been here six months and, and never had a meeting about any of the leases. And, any idea nobody knows it's just not, in the dark is a good answer for how we're asking to make decisions uh, but yet it's also not fair to the tenants no nope. we don't know we don't know if there was a 10 cent thing up there i i haven't seen anything in writing that demands 10 cents a square foot has anybody i mean i've never seen it and i just would like to see it if the, if the FAA is saying that that's what we have to do, let, let's see the letter. Let's see the notice or something. You know, I mean, otherwise, you know, it, it, it takes us where we're not, you know, if, if they require it, then we can show that to our tenants and then they're not mad at us. And I mean, to me, that's just common sense. If, if they require us to do it, then that's their deal. It's not us. If, but if we're requiring it, then we'll take the heat. That's fine. I don't have any problem taking the heat, but you know, I want to know if somebody's putting decisions, making decisions for us. I want to know who it is. So, because I think you want to know who it is, who's who's tying your hands. You want to know, and or and you as counsel. So that's the way I'm going. So, well, I agree with you, Mr. Mayor, because when it all comes back. It all goes back to the budget. And what's the biggest thing that we do every year? The budget. It's approve the budget for this city. And these things all feed into it. And you're absolutely correct. And so I agree with you. So that uh, I have a, just a, a side note on that. Uh, AVIX leaving, I was approached by a local citizen that was doing business with AVIX. And now he goes, guess what? I just lost $100,000 in sales every year. So you think he's very happy either? No, nope. but that's a hundred thousand that he lost that this city's not going to see in revenue turned over and turned over and turned over in this community. So I think sometimes we need to look beyond what this rent does. What does this do when they leave us? What is the economic impact of that when people decide, whoa, I can't afford you. You know, that one 8,000, you know, if he lost a hundred thousand dollars, he do that on our share of the gross receipts tax, and right. that's about one month's rent for them. Yeah. Six thousand. Yeah. So a little less, but just so. You know, but, uh, so I, you know, and I'm game for anybody, but I don't want any more stuff in the blind, blind leaving the blind. No. That's why I would why I brought this up, and you know that. So but, you know, it's it's my understanding since I've been on the council. That those uh, committees or, or commissions were established as uh, uh, advisory. 
but in, in, in saying that, they, they uh, at least in, in, in my experience, the mayor has appointed a, uh, a council member as a liaison to each committee. And that liaison is supposed to come in and make the report that you're talking about, is my understanding. However, the airport committee, I mean, that, that one hasn't been around for, for a long time, maybe the last three, four years. Possibly. And when it was established, it was my understanding that they would be reporting to the legal committee because they were looking at all the legal issues because prior to the legal prior to the airport committee the airport was under the legal committee they were looking at everything that the airport is looking at right now but you know the previous mayor decided that he wanted to to create the uh, the airport committee and then assign himself to to the committee but you know, that's neither here nor there, but that's how the, the process, as far as I understood it, right. is, is supposed to be working. Uh, I know that other than the, the cemetery and I think it's a museum, right. it's a statutorily uh, mandated committees or commissions, right. but the parks and all the other ones are not. Those are created by council. <laughs> And so, yeah, they are they are advisory, but they serve a purpose right. to to be out there, listen to the public, and then there's a a, a, a process that needs to be followed. Like the cemetery would come to the general services and report, and the Parks and Rec Commission also comes to general services and report their finding, and I'm. I'm what I'm understanding is the airport should be coming to legal uh, to to get all these contracts and so forth uh, established with with their reporting of, of what they believe whether it's be, they believe it's good or bad or whatever and and then the other the, I can't think of all the the commissions that are out there but we got a commission on aging yep. all those have have certain commit standing committees that right. they have to report to. Or, or advance their their issues that they have a next step uh, process right like the, the uh, parks and rig for instance their next thing when they approve or whatever their next step is general services yeah and then we look at it and then we make the recommendations for for city council is that happening no meeting with the airport advisory commission had a meeting yeah. in here so the other day was point is that's not happening to, to a large extent it's not yeah I, I don't know whether i mean some of the other standing committees are council okay hey, council council corn and then we'll go to council perry if you don't mind um i i just have to say because i've worked with these committees before and we don't pay any of those people a thing. They've got a passion yep. for whatever it is that they're involved with. Yep. And and we need to give them a whole lot more credence than we're giving them. Absolutely. That's my opinion. Mr. Mayor, I don't know how you want to restructure this thing, but we, at a minimum, we need to have these different groups come in and talk to the committees. Um, or like we did with the Airport Commission uh, Advisory Council, the other day they came to the city council. I found I, I found it very informative, personally, and I don't. I'm not going to tell you how you you think it needs to be done. You're the mayor. You make your mind up. I think that if they have a lot of work and they're working hard, and I feel quite confident that they are, yeah. um, and we keep. In this committee, we've talked about three or four things to put on their plate. Go figure it out for us. And, and either that or let's do away with all those suckers and let's just roll up our sleeves and dig into all these issues. I mean, you can't have it both ways, in my opinion. Other than the two statutorily. Uh, well, if they're in statute, they're in statute. I mean, I get that. 
Um, but I mean, these people are put, donating their time, right. donating their energy. Yep. They have a passion or they wouldn't have volunteered or gone through the process being selected. So let's get them in here. Let's make a part of this city of Roswell governance. Yep. I mean, not just in name only, let's put them front and center. Mr. I, don't disagree. I don't disagree and that's what I want to bring up. Councilor Perry. Uh, j just for a little bit of clarification, I just want to make sure everybody understands that, that these committees are uh, reporting to uh, the council through through our committees, whether they be commissions or committees. Some of these are statutorial. The cemetery is statutorial. Uh, a few others, but normally it's on a process of when they they have things that, uh, to bring forth to council. Not but just uh, uh, it's not been too all, long ago. Commission of Aging uh, came to the uh, finance committee and asked for the finances to be able to do the advisories for the elderly. Uh, it wasn't too long ago the cemetery committee came forth to the um, uh, finance and legal committees uh, for the columbarium uh, rec uh, recommendation that was approved and went forward. The Parks and Recreation uh, Commission uh, come forth with, with uh, whether it be with the uh, bike trails or uh, we we hear from these all uh, quite often when when I was in legal we heard but Bud Kunkel came quite often the mayor came quite often as the airport uh, commission uh, so so I I just want to make sure we understand that it's not that these things have never been done I think that during the time of COVID a lot of things were done differently uh, even committee structure was done differently for the counts five council committee so I just want to make sure. Uh, I, I think it's a matter of getting back to where we need to be instead of feeling like we've got to reinvent a wheel. And the other thing I just wanted to ask is I just I may have misunderstood, but it, uh, I understood if, if I understood correctly, the mayor had said that um, uh, that uh, uh, the one company there at the airport had had left uh, from some decisions from the former from former council, and I was just trying to get some clarifications as to what. What those decisions that the council made that had affected that business? I don't, Councilor Perry. I don't know what you're referring to because yeah, we were just told yeah. that the that the, the we had been told by the committee that the the airport um, the people at the airport like uh, AVAX had gone from six thousand dollars a month to twenty four hundred dollars a month or twenty four thousand a month. That was what we were told was what their proposed new rate, rate increase was, and we've never had any any other briefing from anybody that it was that who was negotiating or anything else. No one has said a word to us in the five months we've been here, and so they didn't say well, all they got was the twenty four thousand a month. Is that why they left? Were there other issues why they left? And I, I think somewhere along the line. In the last five months, the council should have been made aware of where the negotiations were going, or else we're going to wake up with everybody out there going. Anytime you go up 400 percent, I mean, I mean, you know, these people aren't quilters who are kicking out; these are jobs. And so, you know, when you do up 500 percent or 400 percent for a closet, to uh, it doesn't matter whether it's that or the AVEX filling it. We're uh, the problems we have is that these are jobs we're losing here, and, and you know, and gross receipts taxes, and that's what uh, we need. We need to have some discussion on. Um, but we should have known something. And I, about I just. It. And I just wanted to make for, for clarity, and, and I could be very wrong, but I just want just for clarity. I don't remember any decision. Uh, by what 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 is being um, called the, called the former council uh, that put ABEX in such a situation. Uh, I I know that there were negotiations going on. Uh, I will look back at that, but I don't believe there was any decision made by the former council. Uh, so I just think we have to just be careful there uh, because I, knowing a lot of the situations with ABEX specifically. Uh, there were there were a lot of reasons uh, within their internal company for their pulling out. Uh, you know that America's been in a in an economic crisis for a good little bit here, and and uh, the market's not getting 
any better right now. And uh, the structure of a lot of these companies are having to change. And uh, so I think we just have to be careful, uh, you know, about just, uh, you know, th saying some of those things maybe uh, w w when there Perry. are other factors in involved in that. Councilor Perry. I do not recall Ed, the word former counsel being said. So I think what I heard from the mayor was that he was not informed or we were not informed. I don't think I heard him blame the former counsel or anybody to that effect. So if that's what you heard, you heard something different than what I heard. And we can okay. go back to this if you want to do that. But we're not no, blaming no, I'm not looking. What we're talking about, Councillor Perry, is people being informed. That's what we're talking about. And I don't think we're, anyone's playing the blame game on the previous council, the previous mayor. Here's where we are today. And let's move forward and look through the windshield and stop looking through the rearview mirror. So that's what I have to say about that. And. I don't think there's any need to start pointing fingers at anyone at this point in time. And I would like to move this meeting ahead so that we can conduct the business of this committee. One more quick question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, well, I'm, I'm getting old and slower. And I would like to hear from these committees during b before they come and need something done. So I have a better understanding of what they're what they're planning and what their what their vision is because after all we've appointed these people and i'm interested in what they think you know and i come to the table with an idea i'm a whole lot better off if i've got 18 or 20 people sitting around the table thinking on this project because we're going to have a better a better project when we're done than oh no that's not my idea and, and Right. And, and leave the meeting right. and 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 we've got this opportunity and i think we're cutting ourselves short by not utilizing the tools that are available to us i think that's where we all went with this and where this went down this other side road i don't know but that's not what was on we okay. i was just trying to get across i'm trying to get across that as council members that we've got to make decisions that other people have already been through the process and we're not aware not taking shots at you all at the uh, airport because you're doing what you have to do and who's giving you the guidance to say no that's not mm -hmm. yes that is you all just need guidance and that's what i believe needs to take place is guidance and then and, and it's air it out and get a discuss and let's move on i'm not going to sit here and attack somebody at all <laughs> uh so I'm thinking of three things. I kind of would like the um, airport maybe to actually create, work on some type of lease guidelines as far as, I don't know if they can do that, if we can actually task them with that, but help you in coming up with square footage, those type of things, a process of how the leasing process should be. Right. Because I think they're, they're more qualified than I am to assist in that. Second thing is I, I wanna know that they're working. The only way that I know that they're working is if they come here and tell me, here's what we're working on. Um, so, I mean, I can guess, but I don't wanna just hear from them when they need something because in, to ensure that that whole, you know, what's the point in the, the committee if they're actually not accomplishing anything. Um, and um, I would like to be updated at a deeper level than just, than just this. And, and I found the meeting that we had with them very beneficial um, I don't know if that's something to be done repetitively, but uh, I think that it's appropriate for them to come to us once a month. Anyway, that's my thought. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're ready for a motion on this? No, I'm gonna talk about oh. yeah, termination of loss. Oh, oh. okay. And I, yeah, that's just, if the chair can make a motion, I'll make a motion. You're not supposed to. But I would. I do not like the third lot, item 30 in there at all. You want to remove? I I want to remove it. Have you got sufficient places in the other parts of the contract? There's a it's, whole condition of default here on item 14. Okay, okay. move to the eliminate item and there's, 30. That's 30. 
I got a motion to remove item number 30 of this lease, which is termination. It said the lease may be terminated by either party by giving 30 days. Right. First, got to go back to the, like you've already talked to the proprietors, right? Well, they're going to have to go back. Well, I mean, we don't make the motion and we move on. Well, I made the motion, so. In a big favor. We don't have a second. So. Okay. Motion fails. So, we have a motion on the lease as it stands. I'll move. I'll second. We have a motion and a second on Dan's welding lease. All those opposed, there being no opposition, so it passes. Item number B, which is air sale. This like, I probably yeah. can just go down to the Okay, so this is a lease for um, Aerosol Incorporated to enter into building 118. They're an existing tenant there already. Um, and so I've been working with Ron, senior vice president, for the last three months. Um, clarifying language with um, legal, and um, this is the lease he brought forth to me. And um, so they will be renting 20,000 uh, square feet of warehouse industrial space for 441 a square foot with uh, monthly payments of 7,350. Mm -hmm. Their current or their prior. Um, Annual was twenty eight three twenty a dollar forty two per square foot, uh, and this building does have temperature control utilities and um, in, in good working condition. It's one of our newer buildings. Yeah. Before we move on, <clears throat> that last lease it's going to go to full council unless we want to put it back on, put it on the consent item. Councilor Orpesa. Mr. Taylor, I, I would uh, request that these items, these four items on item one, not go on consent. Okay. That's fine. I, I, I think uh, I, I think the council and the public need to hear the, the discussion on, on this item. I agree. I just want to make sure that it did. I did one part of the motion, Mr. Chairman. Why not? But okay. it was one of the recommendations, I think, was for yeah. to go on consent. And so I'm not opposed to it. You know, Mr. Chairman, this brings one other thought to my mind, and that is the various conditions of the building and stuff when they're doing this evaluation on what the rent should be per square foot. We need an inventory of the buildings and what the, the pluses and minuses. Some things have got some great aspects, some things have got no aspect, just like the Daniels lease. I mean, it's a building. No air conditioning, no heating, no running water, got electricity, yes. and they have to pay their own electric bill. Yes, so, you know, um, I suspect if it's a welding company, they got big need for power uh, if they're doing anything. So. Uh, just a little caveat. I keep adding stuff to the list, but that's the way it goes. I'd like to comment that we are working with a categorized lease schedule with the Airport Advisory Council, and I will have my first draft to bud by next Tuesday. Okay. Next. Well, thank you. Which is great because I'll tell you the other thing that she did was she created this list of existing leases out there so that we got a we have a master okay. lease. Sure. 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 We have a master lease schedule out there with what rates are. I don't know whether all of you have seen that. You may want to send it. To, did you send it to all the officers? Or if you don't mind resending that Absolutely. so people can be aware of what you, that work that you've done to get that, that yeah. together. I remember that. It was about this much. <laughs> yeah. 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 About my extensive. screen and about this much down. I <laughs> 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 yeah. to get my bifocal, trifocals on. Yeah. The other comment on this lease here is that we do have a CPI inflator. Yes, sir. yes. It's a five-year lease. So we get a we get a CPI inflator on this as well. 
well, or three percent, whichever is greater. Right. Any other discussion on this? Just as a matter of uh, clarification on the CPI, is, is that CPI applied on a yearly basis, or is it applied it's on annual. a term? Uh, CPI is annual on any lease that's more than a year because we would evaluate the index at the time of an annual lease expiring and entering into a new one. Okay. So it's not like it's a five-year term and then the CPI will apply the next five years. No, it's an annual. It's an annual. It's an annual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Or at least we're keeping up with on an annual basis. You're right. Not waiting for the end of five years and then trying to catch back up. And, yeah. Did that answer your question there, Council? Any other discussion? Motion. Move the adoption of the air sale ink lease and second. There being a motion and a second. Those opposed signify by saying so. There being no so approved. For clarification that's, that's also going to full. Pardon? That's going to full as full well. Yeah. For the record. Next item is the ABEX aerospace. This is a consideration for recommending the approval to authorize AVEX Aerospace to enter a lease for bunkers 1136 and 1142 in their current um, interim that uh, the bunkers were included in their, their overall monthly price. Um, they've decided that they are going to need to maintain and hold on to those bunkers to store some of their uh, firearms, ammunition, explosions. Uh, explosives until they can rehome them or sell those products. So they're planning on staying there for the next year. Um, they are ATF certified by AVEX. And so it's, they're, they're kind of stuck with needing to do something. And so we just went ahead and gave them the same square footage price that we charge all bunkers um, at 225 per square foot. One of the bunkers is just a 200 square foot usable space. And so instead of charging for the entire bunker, we cookie cutter the 200 square feet out. And uh, so they will be paying $292.50 um, for the larger bunker and $37.50 for the smaller square footage in the usable space of the second bunker monthly. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, I got one question. On this diagram, the old runway 17 back in the day, is that the drag strip? Yes. And it runs, I assume that to the top of the page is the start line and the finish line. We don't, I don't see anything that would indicate that would just be the run out area. Um, I would have to look at a larger map. They run parallel, but I'm not sure what their proximity is to the bunker. I believe they're further. I think the, the start line's further. Yeah. Okay. All right. I know you all spent a lot of time on this last month when I wasn't here. So. Oh, we did. You know which is it. Okay. I'm done. We're all okay with FAA regulations. They are outside of the airport operations area. Okay. So they're in a non-aeronautical non space on the airport. Okay. Yeah. First fence runs down there. Down the side. Several Any other questions? Sort of. We need a fence repair project out there pretty bad in some areas. Yeah. Hey, no other questions. Do I have a motion on the floor? Uh, Mr. Chair, we move the adoption of the AVEX aerospace lease for two bunkers. I'll second. Well, actually, one and a quarter, I think, but whatever the number is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> number 1136 and bunker number 1142. Right on. Oh, second. There being a motion and a second. Those opposed signify. There being no opposition, motion so passes. Next item on the agenda North American Aerospace Industry Corporation. It's this is uh, to consider recommending an approval to authorize North American Aerospace Industries Corporation to enter a lease for a parcel of air operations area land. This is a new tenant. Um, they've come to us. They are a recycling company uh, that recycles 96% of all aircraft. 
So they are a very uh, nice addition to our dismantling and salvage of our aircraft out, out at the air center. So they will be on a dirt space adjacent to five by five services. They're partnering with uh, them a little bit to be able to dismantle and then take the items from the aircraft. Uh, they turn all of the plastics down into a material where they can then be regenerated to uh, do 3D printing with their product. Uh, they also uh, make handbags and shoes out of all of the fabrics and um, seat belts and those type of things out of the aircraft. But they are rated at recycling 96% of an aircraft. Um, so I'm excited about their growth here. This is going to be their first parcel and they've discussed other leaseholds with me as well going forward. Um, so they would like to take this five acre parcel, uh, 217,800 square feet um, at 10 cents a square foot, uh, bringing them in at 1815 a month um, or 21,780 um, a year. They do have a CPI. They're looking for a five year lease with 3% or greater. Um, the square concrete with an airplane parked on it with the dark brown stripe, is that one of your teardown pads over there? Yes, it's currently um, in a holdover lease with Abu Aerospace. But they're not getting that. They're getting plain dirt, are they not? They're getting plain dirt. There's no, no electricity, no anything out there. Yes. So what happens if they decide to go build a chain link fence around this area? They have to come and get approvals from us, and well, then we discuss. Yeah, but what happens to the improvements that they make to our property? They are given to us at the end of their leasehold, or we ask them to remove it. Okay. If they're permanent, they can't remove it. I mean, they shouldn't be allowed to yeah. remove Is that not what this lease says? Generally speaking, the fencing isn't considered permanent. You know, if they really desperately want it. But then usually there's a cost benefit of labor to pull a fence up and then have to re put it up again somewhere else. It's not generally worth it. But no fixtures, um, any improvements that they do are generally allowed to be uh, removed by the tenant, you know, unless it's we've negotiated with. Here's, here's, here's one out of left field, Mr. Chairman. So they're going to have equipment parked out here, I assume. Some general yeah, ground servicing equipment. So how far is it from the edge of the active 2103 runway? There's a fence between there, is that correct? No, there's not, but probably in the neighborhood 20, 21 to 25 feet, something like that. And it's away. I can give you a better edge of labor Okay. Just a question, Mr. Chairman. I need I, one of these days, if I ever get caught up with my other chores, I'm going to go out to the airport. We're going to make some measurements on some of this stuff because I know it's been an issue brought up before. And we need better than around 2,500 square feet. And we just like to make this. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Are they doing so? They're just going to rent raw land there? Yes. And then is, are they going to put concrete on it? Are they going to? As, as of now, their plan is only to have a couple Connex boxes there to store what they're dismantling before it can be hauled off uh, to the company that will be uh, doing the stitchery. Uh, they have talked to a local seamstress as well, so they're engaging her uh, to do the work for all of their bags and et cetera. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, actually, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. I actually couldn't get past that part. You said they're making bags out of uh, chairs and mm -hmm. seat belts? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. Uh, and you can choose off your line, like they have emeritus or, um, you know, I said too bad there aren't any Pan Ams left. Right. I to have that. But um, they do, you know, they're based off of, they keep it consistent. So the bag is made out of one entire airline's fabrics. So there's a little nostalgia inside the That's one as well. Fun. Are they doing this anywhere else? They have an operation in uh, North Carolina, but that operation's a little different. They're making homes out of, little tiny homes out of, Wow. Airplanes. That's great. That's a neat idea. That's correct. That's a nice, that's so great. I would just like to bring it to this committee's attention is uh, the termination clause on this is a little different. Yeah. Yeah. 
of this lease may be terminated by the tenant by giving 90 days written notice, but this lease may be terminated by the landlord by only reason of default. A little inconsistent. Yeah, need to, we'll work on that. That's yeah, true. that was my thought. We'll talk to, we'll talk about that. Well, we'll get there. We didn't, we didn't get here overnight. We're not gonna fix it overnight. <laughs> Are you willing to live with that for five years? I, because I don't want to have to send her back mm -hmm. to talk to these people and say, oh, the committee threw a fit and we're not going to do that or this. Yep. Um, I've been noticing inconsistencies at least out there for a long time. And uh, hopefully before I get my four years done, we've got some consistency back. And, and I think you, if, if we uh, change the wording at this point in time, I think we're going to run into the same situation that we ran into with the Department of Health. Okay. That uh, we changed their contract considerably, uh, not to the extent that you're indicating now, but I, I think the, the, the information that was put out at the council was that they signed it they signed the amended uh, contract and then they walked away from it. And I don't think that that is true. They never signed it. They just walked away from the the amended contract. So I think if you if you change the language here now, and I'm willing to live with it for five years for five years, yeah. and, and then take it up at, at that point. Because I'm not going to be in the council by then. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I just bring it up as yeah. this is not consistent. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up to this council, assuming this passes here, to decide. But I'm not proposing a change. I'm just saying here it is. And somebody from that is not part of this committee may make that recommendation. At, at, <laughs> yeah. Mr. So. Chair. Let me ask, how do you come about those? Because considering that they vary, where does that language come from? Generally, it's the negotiation of the tenants. Okay. Okay. It's trying to protect from their side. Right. Um, you know, for us, it's a dirt parcel. So a default on that is rare. Yeah. Um, but it can happen. And primarily, it would be in that, in that regard, pollution-related, environmentally related, not keeping up with FOD, which I'm sure is Mr. Corn's concern about being close to the runway. Uh, those are the items that would put them in default of that lease. Yeah. Fod's a big problem when you get a problem. I hear you. Do we have a motion? It's expensive. Any further I measured it's 4,100 feet. Huh? 4, feet. 4, oh, that wasn't even close. <laughs> Good job. Bad way. Any further discussion? <laughs> Just as a point of clarification, on this particular lease, the equipment, if it's installed, would be would stay with the premise. Stay with it. Unless we ask for the man to face. Any further comments, discussion? I have a motion. I'll make a motion to recommend to full council uh, the following RAC lease agreement with North American Aerospace Industries Corporation. Second. Second. There being a motion and a second, you missed out there, Answer. No, no, I was waiting. <laughs> I wanted yeah. to get a paycheck for this meeting, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. I want them on the minute. Yeah, okay, <laughs> got them. So there being a motion and a second, those opposed signify. There being no opposition, motion so passes. Okay. Next time, you're off the hook now. Thank you. Thank you. For, for a minute. Thank for a minute, you are. So, next item on the agenda is Todd. 928 Davidson Drive. Off. Todd, yes. you get the seat now. Hello. Todd again. Here. Ready. So, I'm bringing this back to you again. Um, you've seen it before. You're going to think deja vu. Um, but, uh, a little bit of background and history on this. Of course, we had the property at 928 Davidson that was um, given over to the library. Library deemed that they didn't have any use for it, would like us to go ahead and sell it. So we went ahead and took bids 
um, that closed out on April 15th. Um, we did have seven offers, four offers that were above the appraisal amount. And then we sent offer six to city council on June 9th um, to be sold through the ordinance 2208. Well, after we passed, after council passed the ordinance, the um, purchaser of the, or the award winner of the bid decided to go ahead and do a home inspection which they could have done at any time. We we're selling the house as is. It was made very clear. They found a couple of things that they didn't want to mess with. Um, they, they found a 60 amp service in the house and the air conditioner in the in the house was just a heat unit, not, not an AC as well. So they said, well, we want $13,000 off the price. And we said, no. Well, that's not how this process works. Um, we take the highest bid. It's approved through the ordinance. You were that highest bid. Now, if if you're out, you're out. So we go to the next highest bid, which happened to be offer number six. Um, there was a, a VA individual in between there, but he has since secured another property, so he was out. So again, this is our next highest offer at eighty-five thousand, um, which is above our appraisal price. Um, going to yield still approximately 78000 to the library for that. Uh, city attorney has reviewed the agreements um, to sell this by ordinance, but we need your blessing for the new buyer on, on this as well and the new and the new price of 85000 So with that, I stand for questions. Anyone have <laughs> any questions? Yes. Yes, sir, Mr. Moon. That was Tiger. Tiger was a long time employee of the record of the record for a long time and he when he died, he uh he lent some money to the to the field club and the Eagles Club and he left uh his property to the um uh, library. And so you know it's he was a good guy, did an awful lot for our community with his money. That was nice. It's, I hope all of them are going to be for the fair program. <laughs> 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 I'm such a gentleman. Oh, come on. Can you put that in? Man, that's not to be written to paper. If I have anything, I also have to add that I've, um, uh, Lisa Gilmore from Chandler's Home Realtor is here and has given me every assurance that this new buyer understands everything about the property and the house, um, is good with our timeline to advertise our ordinance, our whole process that we have to go through, and they are they're golden, they're good to go. So we don't foresee any other issues and have to come back to you on this. I I say that with you know just a little bit of reserve, but just in case. You don't so. come back and sell this the third time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Just as a reminder, uh, remind me if if I understood you the last time, this money is going to go to the library, first of the library? Yes, sir. Not, not into general? It will not go into general fund. It will go into the library. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. Any other questions? Well, so I'm going to ask a legal question. So we already proved the sale of this property once before. And it's negated and now we've got another one so we're just starting over from square one is that what we're doing good mr chairman i move that we i just want to make sure okay yes uh, I'm sorry, that. Counselor. Uh, yes that what you just said councillor corn is correct we're just we just started from the beginning because it was a new purchase for a new price okay so i want to earn my money so I want to second the motion. <laughs> you can just make it. Oh, you just made it. <laughs> oh, you're going to let me make it, and then you want credit for second it. Yes, sir. Yeah. We have a motion there. Yeah, you. I'm working on it. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the sale of the property located 
at 928 Davison. And I don't have the legal description that I've seen, so that's what it's gotta be. I, I second. I have a motion and a second. Those opposed signify. There being no opposition, motion so passes. Well, are we going full or are we going to consent? Well, we've got to go to a public hearing. On the ordinance. On the ordinance. All right. Do you wish to amend or? Nope. Nope. Goes to full council. Very good. Thank you. Uh, guess what? No, you don't have to. Do you have to do this next? I, I might. Um, Mr. Mr. Hess is on, so I'm, I'm not sure. I was going to take it. Yeah. Tell me. All right. Uh, good evening, councilors. Uh, this is the accompanying ordinance that has to be provided because the sale is over $25,000. Uh, this this bill, the reason for this is there's a referendum provision that if people are unhappy with the sale price, they can get signatures and have a referendum on the sale. But otherwise, uh, this ordinance will repeal the previous ordinance for the um, previously approved sale and is more, um, it's a legal formality more than anything else. Okay. Questions? I mean, I have a question. Mm -hmm. First, the order committee action. This is April 28th. Previously, the April 28th. Mm. Is, that when, yeah. is that when you got the original? So that when you got the original? Yes, sir. That's what I was talking about. Clarification. Okay. Any other discussion? Well, I'm trying to figure out something here. So we approved this ordinance. So we got the, is it the anticipation that we have the public meeting, next city council meeting, is that the plan? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption of ordinance 22xx dealing with the property lost 20 at 928 davison drive um, and also a public meeting so i'll second there being a motion and a second those opposed signify there being no opposition, motion so passes. Next item on the agenda is 3M or 3A advertising agency service. So unless Juanita wants to do that, I will do it. I don't know if she Juanita does. doesn't want to do it. She's on early. I'm on the I'm online. Would you like me to do it or do you want to do it? Um you go ahead and I'll be here for any questions. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> you get lunch pop tomorrow, Chuck? Uh, at least get lunch out of her. So this is a, the action request is to, you know, uh, consider recommending for approval an amendment to the three advertising agreement. Uh, three advertising is the agency of record. Um, and they have, they were from an RFP from 20, uh, 0002. Uh, the reason for this amendment is to add a hundred thousand uh, dollars for fiscal year 23 and presumably fiscal year 24. Uh, and that hundred thousand dollars is a match grant from a DOT uh, grant uh, that I think Scott could talk more about if necessary. Uh, so we the, the request here is to add a hundred thousand dollars per year for fiscal year 23 and fiscal year 24 to their current uh contract amount of 235 and then so the documents here are the contract with three advertising for 235 there is the amendment piece here and then, of course, there's the Mexico Department of Transportation Air Service Marketing Assistance Grant. I should make clear that the $100,000 is to be used for the Fly Roswell campaign and will only be used for that. It's not going to be used necessarily, as I understand it, for uh, any other purpose to set aside. 
Good job. And then Amalia has the breakdown of the chart that goes into the contract um, that gets updated every year. So that has been adjusted to include the 100,000 for Air Center, and you guys can look at the breakdown for that. <clears throat> Juanita, are you not feeling well? <laughs> no, oh. I'm sorry. No, I'm um, sorry for you you're not yeah. feeling well. That you're being a real trooper right. by attending. Nose is yeah. um, <laughs> the, um I do want to share a couple of things. Josh, thank you so much. You did a really great job. Um, on the amount, I don't I Scott and I were talking about it. The 235 comes from public affairs lodgers tax money. The 100,000 is is separate from their grant money. That money would be spent and would be given back to the air center um his 100,000 cuz it would be coming from there. When we do the when we file for reimbursement. All right, so the, let me just follow you. So the 235 is already in place, correct? Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing here is going to authorize to spend another 100, but that's going to be reimbursed after spent and sent back to the airport. Air you got that, Mr. Fuentes? You follow that transaction? Yes. Okay. And let me ask you one other question because it says in here or states that for 23 and 24 i am can we bind ourselves to 24. i don't know that we're ne necessarily binding ourselves for 24 because we generally have non-appropriation language but it's it's to the intent is to utilize i think that department of transportation grant for both years right. But you said it says in here 23 and 24 i just want to make sure that we're operating Josh, what is the term of the grant the, um, it's, I believe it's 400,000 for 23 and 24. Scott would know more. So it's 400,000 total for uh, over two years. For the grant, for two years. 50 percent match. And Mr. Chairman, and I, and I bring that out because just like any of our state appropriation or any loans, it will be up to the council. Ultimately, that is the term. Honestly, for us to be able to access and be able to get reimbursement, we have to participate. If the council chooses next fiscal year not to participate, then we just will not will not receive that grant funds. Right, but we're okay with yes. saying 24 as well. Yes. Okay, we're not in violation of it. That's the question I have: is that we're not in violation of? Not until we do it. Don't. No. Councilor, Mr. Chairman, was this hundred thousand? Is it approved of the FY23 budget? Is it already there? Yes. And is the transfer back out of the air center already anticipated in the 23 budget the transfer back out yeah back okay. in back oh, in. The, the, the reimbursement yeah it is not the, the grant is new so we got to do a change you can you can update that when when you update in january the uh, revenue the revenue is not budgeted Mr. Chairman, that's what makes it so hard to put a budget together. We got these deals that are out there, and we're not fully apprised of the way it's supposed to work. You've got a hundred thousand. If we pass this, then you got to come up with another hundred thousand. And quite frankly, I don't know where you're going to find it, but that's just my editorial. Um, so I don't know. Perfect. It'll come out, but then it'll come back in. Mm -hmm. look, if I spend 100, I get back 50. He gets back 50. 100 spend is already budgeted. It's already budgeted. 50 reimbursement, 50 reimbursement is not budgeted. Right. So, so, we've got so when that comes back, we just got to make sure that's part of the transfer back in. Correct. Right. Yeah, but with, you know, I mean, Mr. Mr. Chairman, you sit on the finance committee with me, yeah. and I don't. I mean, these things are not, has, have not, at least in my memory, and I'm getting old and slow and maybe forgetful a little bit. And this is a already been in effect for a year. We're asking for an extension now and a third extension right. that you brought out. Right. And I I don't know where the I, I don't know where it's accounted for. So it's, that's just my two cents. I'm not going to get in the way of this now. 
But I may later. Well, it's not accounted for. The hundred outflow is yeah. is accounted for, but the fifty thousand revenue is not accounted for, and we don't know when we would get that revenue back. It has to be spent before we get that revenue, and so they're going to be hanging out there uh, with a revenue coming in at some time that we don't know when it's going to show up. Does that fair? And we're on a cash basis, so we can't we can't put that revenue until we get it in our pocket. Well, it would be okay if I gave a mayoral decree to the uh, chairman of finance and the chairman of legal. Y'all take care of that. Don't screw it up. <laughs> then, then we know everything will be done. There's <laughs> only keeping records of it. And so everything that's right in there, no one can goof it up because Amaya's in charge. Of it. Yeah. There's a term. Mm -hmm. I do get money uh, back and make sure that it is deposited. Yes. And we try to do it by the end of the fiscal year. Sorry, sir. No, it's fine. I would just like to remind the mayor that he assigned us these wonderful jobs, high paying jobs, yeah. with a whole lot of responsibility that he can do what he does, and I'm going to do what I, I do, and you do what you do. That enough said. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Chair, maybe it's a good idea to send it to but finance well, to, to address what the mayor was wanting you guys to do. <laughs> I don't know. You want I mean, to but I'm putting uh, joking aside, <laughs> it may be a good idea if it does go back to uh, to finance. And, uh, well, we always have these. You feel that it, it needs to go. Well, we got all these these promises. <laughs> that I don't know anything about. And like I said, and properly quoted the newspaper, here's another promise that was made that I didn't know anything about. How many more of those promises are out there? Here's another one. And I'm going, come on, guys. We, we're we not, I mean, remember when we put the budget together, uh, half the committee had less than 90 days to try to get our arms around this financial picture for the city of Roswell. And I'm here to tell you, that Ed can speak for himself, he's sitting here. Now I don't have my arms halfway around that tree yet. And that tree's why we're having special meetings. We've had as many special meetings as we've had regular meetings, have we not, Mr. Fuentes? And that's gonna continue till I get a better overall yep. picture of this thing. Yep. And so I'm just, Voicing my concern, I'm not going to make the motion on this thing um, because I think it does need to go to because you know fifty thousand here, twenty five thousand there, a hundred thousand over there. Pretty soon you're talking about some real money, and um, it makes it very difficult to 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 put all, to get your arms around the tree and put this in a package, and, and you know I mean it just I, I, don't well, I guess I'm, I'm going to just going to ask: Would it, would it be the preference of this committee to send it to? What's our time frame? Plans, think. Ms. Jennings. Yes, for the, the, the fly, fly Roswell, it just has to be before June thirtieth. Our other stuff is in play, so the other things that are on there are the the renewal for year two is in play right now. We have a campaign that starts on October first. For Fly Roswell, we haven't done any anything other than um, the billboard, which I would like to convert over to this grant money and save it from general fund advertising. And I would like to um, volunteer to have a special for my department so I can explain my stuff to y'all at, I don't know, at the next finance, because um, I do think that would be helpful. Oh, trust me, you're on the list. <laughs> well, I'd like to go. Can I move up higher on the list so I can explain what we're doing and how we're doing it so that I could have some better direction on what you guys would like? Because um, we're, I'm continuing to move with how we have been. But again, I'd love the opportunity to, to have the meeting. Well, I, I'm not precluding anybody from coming before finance and explaining the way they do business. Matter of fact, airports front and center. Uh, we're going to discuss that a little more. 
Um, Mr. Chair, your chairman of finance is going to have a discussion about what the next special meeting is going to look like. Um, and we've had the other enterprise funds except the airport. And um, those are strange critters, if you will, because they're not necessarily part of the federal fund side of things. Enterprise. Um, so, but we still need to understand them. And I've got some more questions for the folks that we've already talked to, um, but when it's appropriate, I'll get them answered. So I, I, if, it, if, if we're not completely messing up something real bad, I'd like to have an opportunity to see this in finance. That's my two cents. Mr. Chair, I actually um, support what Juanita is doing here, but I, I would like to make a, a motion to have this move to the finance, the next finance committee meeting. I'll say on there. Got a motion and a second to move this item to the finance committee or any further discussion. Ms. Jennings, that will not bother this at all because you're going to have no. to wait. A no, sir. The, not, um, the other items are still in play. Just the fly Roswell would be held up. Um, would, you, would you guys consider me adding the purchase order to that finance committee so I don't have to wait another month? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, I'm not trying to s stop anything. No, 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 but I understand. I do, uh, but, I, but I need to have a better understanding. Oh, sure. Good. And not only me, but the other four members on the committee, which one of us in here. Council. And then the whole, yes, eventually. Um, everybody needs to catch up. Sure. Um, um, so if we're not going to... And besides, you've got or you've got some other. This isn't the whole thing. We've got other money. So whatever you've already got in the works, I don't think it's going to cripple you to go ahead and do that if it's work, if it's included in the budget. Yes. It's all these other things that are spinning around out here in space that I've got heartburn about because <laughs> nobody's got a list. Well. I think one of the things you know, Mr. Fuentes has something he wishes to say is that I would like to, you know, I think what you're saying here is we got all these potential revenue items coming in here that we don't know what they are. And, and we would like to see because that will have a full impact. Obviously we can't get them until we get them, but I don't have a clue. Like the other day we spoke about the water uh, department and we spent all that money out there and there's partial reimbursements that are supposed to be coming back we don't know what those reimbursements are or when we're to expect them because we know sanitation like our last meeting they're again, not making a pun on words but they're going to be underwater by 1.8 million dollars based upon the current budget and the transfer out so if we've got monies coming in that we don't have, we don't know about, I guess what part of what you're saying is that not right, Councillor Corn? We would oh, like to have I mean, the whole an thing idea is... of what our additional revenues that we're going to get reimbursed for. So, Mr. Fuentes? Just on this item, uh, Mr. Chair, committee members, I think the sending it to finance it will give the staff an opportunity to provide additional information to clarify. And it, if the committee at that time feels comfortable, they can proceed and move forward to the full council. So, there's yeah. still the opportunity to continue to move the natural port, uh, but it will give staff the opportunity. So I just want to make sure that for us and staff, we'll, we'll go back, we'll have a week, we put together all the information to make sure we answer all of the questions that we heard here today. Okay. okay. I appreciate that, that you, you know, you, that, you'll have that. That's answer. what I'm after, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I just want to know what's behind this. Oh, I get it. Door so, number three. So we have a motion to move and a second to move this item to finance committee. Yes. All those opposed signify there being no opposition. Item moves to next finance committee. Next item on the agenda is the uh, Roswell, Roswell Adult Soccer League property use agreement. There she is. And I first have to make well, I have to make an apology. You did? That well, I said Josh called me say, hey, let's can we just go ahead and do this? If it was a rental agreement, man, just get her done and move on. But I just felt like, well, we need to let the full council know what's going on. That's the only reason, because this would have been done. 
And my apologies to Mike and and uh, that was an afterthought. You guys didn't do anything wrong, so. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Go right ahead, please. All right, so I bring forth before you this uh, property use agreement. In the background, approval of this agreement will allow the Roswell Adult Soccer League the usage of uh, Cielo Grande competition fields for soccer games once a week for 10 weeks. There's the hours. Um, it's going to pay rent for the usage. We have to provide liability insurance um, and everything set forth in this contract. Okay, and so next slide. Um, the rent that we do is the thousand thirty one eighty five. These are the days for the games. Um, uh, they are responsible for maintaining the area neat and clean. Of course, the restrooms, or they've got a socket and that kind of thing. So the next slide will have how did we come up with the one thousand? And so what we have done with 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 all the leaks is that we have said this is what it cost annually for us to maintain this. So as you can see, that was the annual cost divided it by 365 days. This is the 10 days. We're on a 50-50 cost recovery. And that's how we arrived at that amount. You did your homework. I did. She's good. That's awesome. Still doing homework on it. And we're always looking at that. So and so oh, and as you see too. So that was the 75,000 was 45% of it because it's not the entire company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's great. Is there any questions? Let's through it. Next slide. Okay. So that's what we would like for you guys to do. Okay. Any questions? No, I think. Counselor. Yeah, I do have a question. Uh, these are play only fields, right? Games only, yes, sir. Game, games only. <laughs> So, do, are, are they going to be allowed any practice? They did not ask for it. They just wanted to play the games. Because most of, most of the leagues. No practice and all that, you're right. And that's all they wanted were these days. So, if, I mean, it, I, I find it very hard <laughs> coming from a, from a set, softball standpoint. To not be able to practice and then just go to the games. I mean, that to me doesn't make a lot of sense. Adult leagues and playing adult soccer, we were lucky to get together for practice when I used to play. Now it was a long time ago. I'll give you that. <laughs> you were lucky to get together and you pretty much your game was to practice any game. So it's not unheard of. And okay. they may be playing at different areas, but this is what they are. Okay. That answer. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? I receive a motion. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to consider approval of the property use agreement between the city and the Roswell Adult Soccer League to be placed on the consent agenda. Call nine one one. What's your mom? Okay. <laughs> In that case, I'm gonna have ten percent. Okay. That's fine. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we can negotiate. Um... I'll get. I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> there, being, there being a motion and a second to place on the consent agenda for next meeting the adult, Roswell Adult Soccer League property use agreement. All those opposed? Are being done? Adam passes to consent. Yes, you get the hot seat again. <laughs> it's aerospace bombers. Fine. Same thing, different spots. Yes, different bunkers. Yeah. So um, these are, well, they're separate items, but it is an, a request to consider recommending an approval to authorize AVEX Aerospace to enter an interim lease for bunkers 1133 and 1137. The square footage remains the $2.25 a square foot. The purpose for the interim lease uh, for AVEX is they have clients that are currently in these uh, bunkers and then need to hold space for them. The current time frame for ATF certification is 10 to 12 months. 
So in order for them to convert these to the tenants that, that they have been subleasing to um, and or uh, for us to gain that certification, we would not be able to do that uh, quickly. So they're basically buying time for them for trucks that are appropriate to haul these items out of these bunkers uh, to their new location. And uh, we also changed the language in the interim lease to allow for subletting uh, because that was not in their lease prior. I assume you all were fine with that legal. I have no problem with it. <laughs> Mr. Answer Chair, Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? What is the annual on this? This is only temporary leases. Um, they are both, uh, one is due to expire November 30th. Oh, shit, now. The, uh, the second one is due to expire March 31st. Okay. Yeah. No. I always like to see what we're getting. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay, sure. sure. Question. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Ask for a motion, please. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to consider recommending approval to authorize AVEX Aerospace to enter an interim lease for bunkers 1133 and 1137. I have a second. I have a second, and if you would like, it could go on consent. I agree with consent. So we have an item sent, and I have a second on that as well. I'm going to refrain from my. <laughs> Any further comments? So, item number six is consider recommending an approval of the AVEX bunkers 1133 and 1137 to be put on the consent agenda. All those opposed signify. There being none, motion so passed. Now we've got some more bunkers. This this will be uh, an, another interim lease uh, for AVEX Aerospace for 1130, 1131, and 1144, um, continuing until March 31st. The purpose for two separate leases was the expiration times that they needed, and it is two different clients that are subleasing, so they requested we give them clean language um, for both of their clients that they were going to use separately. I'm sorry. Any questions? Let's move this. I'm going to let her ask to make the motion because I don't want to have you have a coffee chat. Oh, I thought I choked you up. I said, I thought I choked you up. Okay, so Mr. Chair, I'd like to consider recommending for approval to authorize AVEX Aerospace to enter an interim lease for bunkers 1130, 1131, and 1144 to be added to the consent agenda. Okay. Second. I have a, a motion and a second to place on the consent agenda for next council meeting leases. AVEX for bunkers 1130, 1131, and 1144. Those signified by saying so, there being none, motion so passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Sure. It was your meeting today. Sure. Thanks. We've got so now we got Air Center report. They're here, see if they want to say anything. I, that, that, I don't see anybody leaping to their feet, Mr. Chairman. Well, we have anything to do now? So, questions? If you have. Uh, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. We got an asterisk here, partially reporting on landing fees and parking fees. Who's responsible for collecting those fees? You do? Our FBO is not responsible for collecting those. No, because we don't, we don't charge landing fees to the general aviation uh, public. It's only to the commercial. So who aircraft? Who's who's paying these landing fees? Uh, so typically we do it through the MRO. So it's Air Seattle and Jen Air and okay. Others. We don't charge American Airlines. We we will be yes. Okay. Uh, I think actually, yeah, she's not her head. So I know we were working on it, so I wasn't sure when we started. But yeah. Okay. 
You are fairly aware. Okay, and the parking fees back to your MROs? Yes. And other people that have, let me ask this question. I own 727 sitting out there, one of them. Um, I contract with one of the MROs for them to do, because we know a 27 is not ever going back in service, right? To do maintenance either on a 30 day hold, I didn't, I mean, they all got all this in the regular one year hold and all that stuff. So we're not collecting directly parking fees for many aircraft that are parked out there from either airplane businesses. So confusing sometimes because American Airlines doesn't know that many airplanes, they lease them from a leasing company. So do we get direct payment from the leasing companies and or the one that's got the big sign on the tail? In general, we get our we get our lead, our parking fees from the MROs. We do get paid directly from American Airlines, for example. Uh, that was at their request. And there are a couple of other smaller ones. We have a couple of planes that, that pay directly, such as uh, Logistic Air, that they own the plane and pay. Um, Jet Grant also owns planes and, and pay directly. But in general, they go through the hours. Well, I happen to note that there was a lot of American Airline mechanics running around there, United, and various airlines were doing their own on ready maintenance, if you'll, that's a legitimate term. Um, and how many airplanes that are going to potentially go back in service are still out there? If you can answer that question. It's you... a tough question, to be honest. So history-wise, um, we knew when United came in that most everything that they put on the ground was going to go back out. And I would say there's less than five out there now that are left, but probably two or three. Um, so those are mostly gone. Um, everything that American brought out, they intended to retire the Airbus 330s, the 767s, the 757s. Those are all still sitting out there. The MD-80s from a couple of years ago are still sitting out there that are still in a lease. Those will eventually go up for sale when the lease is done. Uh, the reps is kind of, you know, depends on the airplane. Depends on who owns it and what they want to do. So there's, there's a mixed bag out there of, of those <laughs> that will go back and those will, that will get sold uh, off the part and scrap. So if I remember correctly, um, our, uh, our, our future client um, that we're building the hangar for, one of their big focuses is going to be changing those 57s and 67s to cargo configuration. It has to be done in an enclosed hangar, according to my understanding of the regs. So maybe one, all those airplanes will go through their facility before it's all said and done. At least that's our desire. Okay, I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Would the city clerk like to? I don't know. She's been awful quiet down there. She may. <laughs> she didn't slip out of her chair into the table, though. <laughs> Anything you wish to report besides your written report? No, I don't think we have anything. Okay. Human resources is not, not here. They were online. Okay. Yeah. And that's fine. Can I ask a question on the, on the human resources? Yes, sir. I, I would like to, to request, if possible, a report that will give us uh, a breakdown of departments, how many individuals on each department, how many vacancies, uh, you know, how many hired and, and exit per department sure. uh, to try and, and because right here we have like 68 vacant positions, 28 new ones and 16 that have exited. Uh, I, I think Personally, for my information, I, I would like to see a breakdown uh, of departments, of, of how, how we're doing department-wise as far as how many are being hired, how many are exiting, and, and that kind of stuff. I don't disagree with you. And what they can tell us should be able to what I call a turnover report. Yep. Yep. And I think that we should request maybe 
that in addition so that we see where these vacancies are taking place just so you're i think to answer your question a little more finite mm -hmm. or give you some little information if you were to know the whatever department is over here what's their turnover rate and what's happening is that kind of what you're looking for right. counselor yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm sort of we can get that for you. Uh, approved in the budget for that department, how many openings they have, what positions they are for that department, so we have that information. So yeah. I'm sure the minute's watching that I'll give it to our first thing. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I have well, a first. You're, you're well, right. well, I'll I'll second, because the there was a hand up in the air. I was, I was just, uh, do, do we do exit interviews of every employee? If they will do, we do them, sir. And where do they go? The HR department. The HR department is on. But it might be, I don't know, but it might be nice if they were shared with the council anyway on extra interviews. If someone had a reason for leaving, we would at least know early or know why. So if it might alleviate or give us a notice if there's a problem somewhere in the department. So the council, I mean, I, to me, I think we should have. Something like that. The only thing, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Mayor, and, and committee members, uh, the only thing I would uh, I would ask is maybe uh, probably that would be something that management will have to discuss with with legal, just because of the personnel HR matter nature of it. Some information we can't disclose. Uh, but we can certainly discuss it with legal and see to what extent certain information can be shared. Well, it would be, and hopefully, it'll be informative. May not be. Somebody may just leave because they got a better job somewhere else. I mean, that was pretty simple. So I don't, I don't know, uh, Mr. Chairman. I I heard a rumor, and Mike, maybe you can clarify this. Uh, that the police department now, with uh, they have a number of what do you call them, cadets, um, that are fixing to graduate the academy in Santa Fe. Did I hear that right? Uh, sort of jump in forward when we were talking about HR personnel. Uh, as of last week, uh, we were fully staffed in our previous numbers. Obviously, the council gifted us with five more positions, so we're now working at Villa Nodes. I believe I signed a couple new ones today. All the police departments so will be very close to filling those additional five now. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, and we're letting people do the bid, they accept them, we're still working very hard to get our place here, so that we're not limited in how many people are. I think that's great news. That's outstanding. Yeah. That's outstanding. When we, when we do reach that, I believe we're not going to reach that. Uh, we'll put out a big pressure. We'll send out to everybody. Did you buy the beer that day? some more positions to try to get up to that magic 110, 120, whatever that magic number is. The police department will decide to take anything because the cops were gifted with. Uh, so I'm sure we'll be having those discussions as we get to that new budget discussion that don't look at the practices. And with this, the police department was asked or if they had more positions, they can control those positions. Building work towards filling that. Our goal, if we if we reach that max, our goal is to build a list of people waiting to come to work for us. Yeah. Yep. That's that's all we have. Yep. 
Excellent, Mr. Chairman. Yep. I, I can't. Oh, that's excellent news. Excellent. Yep. excellent news. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Judging from council and Corps, Corps uh, cough, do you reckon he can put us in a wheelchair and be sure to have enough money to fire those people? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to ask the legal department if they have anything they want to say in their report or add to their report. No, I don't uh, think so. Uh, yeah, we just, just want, we got one new litigation last week that's already with the insurer and uh, it should be taken care of in motion practice early on based on the complaint. Um, otherwise, we will um, work on standardizing some lease forms so we don't necessarily bump into uh, some problems discussed earlier today moving forward. Thank you, Councilor. Now, our there are no other reports. Let's have a little public participation. If we so, do we have any questions from the public? There's a couple people on there. Oh, okay. Going once, going twice, there being no public participation, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thanks for the uh, birthday. Can I get a cupcake? Please, yeah.